دوش دوش یا رب حق ناد علی انسل الجلیل یا رب حق شای نجف مرتضا حلی Same prayers before dinner. This is a responsibility shared by family members. Here it is the turn of the young granddaughter. Things are different in the Pamirs. Pamirs. People living on lower ground call these mountains the roof of the world. dating back to the Zoroastrian period, is a reminder that civilization has not passed by unnoticed. In fact, the Pamirs were a crossroads of Euro-Asian commerce for more than a thousand years during the days of the Great Silk Road. These valleys connected Europe and the Middle East to the vast markets of China. The remote mountains are home to 200,000 Pamiris. For more than 70 years, they were an obscure outpost of the Soviet Union, a strategically important area bordering China and Afghanistan. Now they belong to the gorno badakhshan Autonomous Region, a part of independent, impoverished and conflict-ridden Tajikistan. Since independence in 1992, Pamiri living standards have plunged. In the Soviet era, prices were subsidized and wages were kept artificially high in order to populate these strategic mountains. Coal was transported at Moscow's expense to heat homes, offices and institutions. Pamiris could easily seek education elsewhere in the Soviet Union. Those days have gone. Now families subsist only on what they can earn from small-scale agriculture. Mostly it is a hand-to-mouth existence. For many it is like being forced back into the Stone Age. The authorities have managed to keep schools running, although many teachers haven't been paid in years. Education has long been a matter of pride for Pamiris. Children go to school from an early age, despite the winter cold. Temperatures go down to minus 50 degrees Celsius in some areas. But schools are kept open in the winter, thanks to coal provided by the European Union and distributed by the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies. Without the coal, schools would close and slowly but surely, Pamiri society would slip back into backwardness. In order to reduce the reliance on outside deliveries of coal, the Federation is currently working to refurbish and insulate schools and hospitals. Music and poetry are an essential part of life in the Pamirs. Boys learn to play the robab, a guitar-like instrument, at an early age. Their audience is usually no bigger than the household. The wistful songs of Persian poet Hafiz, accompanied by the robab, drum and flute, are locked in the Pamir Mountains, unknown in the outside world.
Red Cross workers, bringing aid to what may be the poorest part of Central Asia, face an uphill task in moving around. Roads were built throughout these gravelly mountains during the Soviet era, but they are gradually falling into a state of disrepair, like so much in this part of the world. Village children at play. A closer look reveals shoes that only just cling to the children's feet and tattered clothes that are literally being torn apart. Except for knitted tops and colourful Pamiri socks, new clothes are an unheard of luxury. Major towns are situated at altitudes of between two and four thousand meters. The roads between them are fraught with danger of avalanches, rocks and ice. The jumble of mud and stones is unpredictable. In spring, meltwater washes away many roads, making travel almost impossible. Towns and villages easily become totally isolated. For people who used to have access to a good medical service, isolation is a bitter enemy. Few people can now afford to buy coal, so instead they collect firewood. Vegetation is already scarce and it may only be a matter of time before the few woods in the Pamir Mountains disappear completely. For many Pamiris, survival has become a day-to-day -day challenge. When the short term is so unforgiving, the long term ceases to exist. The problem of collecting firewood tomorrow is a question to be answered tomorrow. Not long ago, the Bartang Canyon was virtually inaccessible. The only way to get here was by narrow paths and bridges made of stone and brushwood. The word Bartang means squeezed sides or narrow flanks. The reason for the name is obvious. A warehouse used by the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies. Here, clothes from European Red Cross Societies are being loaded for distribution, mainly to school children in mountain villages. These are shoes from the Spanish Red Cross and clothes from the Swedish Red Cross. Everything is carefully monitored. Lack of winter clothing is such a huge problem that it is vital that this aid goes to those in the greatest need. Winter clothing is such a huge problem that it is vital that this aid goes to those in the greatest need. Local truckers are hired to transport the clothing, injecting much needed funds into the local economy. Thank you. 
Children and their parents eagerly await the clothes, but it is an orderly affair, organized by the Tajikistan Red Crescent Society. These are all friends and neighbors, and no one is going to jump the queue. In the long run, such deliveries of clothes and shoes cannot be sustained. Therefore, the Federation and the Tajikistan Red Crescent have begun a program to support local shoemaking. Many villages still have master craftsmen who know how to make shoes from lambskin. <laughs> With Red Cross help, these master craftsmen are now teaching these skills to school children. In this way, they pass on to a new generation, a craft which was in danger of becoming lost, but is needed now more than ever. On a hilltop, a Russian soldier looks across the Pianj River towards Afghanistan. Some 20,000 Russian troops guard the Tajik border. Here in Gorno Badakhshan, one of their main tasks is to prevent the smuggling of opium. But it is a long border and the river is narrow. This border area is the fastest growing drugs highway in the world. Already, the effects are being felt as more and more Pamiris fall victim to drug addiction. Sturdy vehicles are needed for these roads. The jumble of mud and stones is unpredictable. Sometimes the road is studded with huge boulders, the size of a car. When the Soviet Union collapsed, so did hundreds of factories up and down Tajikistan. Gorno Badakhshan was no exception. But there has been a small revival of cottage industries. Whereas previously, tools of all kinds could be imported from elsewhere in the Soviet Union, now they need to be made and repaired locally. Nowadays, nothing goes to waste. As people go about their daily business, plastic sheets and boxes from humanitarian aid agencies are used to good effect for insulation and storage. Radio does not reach this village, so the flute provides background music for the women's work inside the house. Clothes are stored in a box that originally contained humanitarian aid from the European Union. Pamiri villagers live under a constant threat of avalanches. 
a single rock that is dislodged from a mountain hovering over a village can completely destroy the houses that lie in its path. Roofs of Pamiri houses are flat, covered with clay, with windows like pyramid-shaped lanterns on top. The roof plays an important role in the household. Stocks of wood and hay are kept here, and fruits are dried in the late summer. Music is such a big part of people's lives that virtually each village has a master instrument maker. Sitar and tar differ from valley to valley, but the Pamiri sound is unmistakable. Despite the cold weather above ground, there is plenty of warmth below. The Pamiers are bound in hot springs and geysers. Garm Shashma is the most famous Pamiri health spa. Water gushes out of the cliffs, leaving behind strangely formed calcium stalactites before settling in natural basins. It's perfect for a bath after a hard day's work. There are several such warm springs in the Pamirs. One of them, Kazarati Bibi Fatima, is believed to cure infertility. It is a popular place of pilgrimage for women, some of whom travel hundreds of kilometers on foot in the hope of a cure. of the Pameri Mountains, unaltered for thousands of years, is in stark contrast to the transformation that is now taking place in Pameri society. After 70 years of development, the Pameris are in danger of being thrown back into the Stone Age. Humanitarian agencies such as the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies, are working to ease the impact of the transition. But ultimately, it is up to the Pamiris themselves to adjust to the fact of dwindling outside assistance. In just a few years, the Pamiris have gone from being part of a superpower with access to travel, education and personal advancement to being isolated from the rest of the world.
At the same time, their living standards have plummeted. The future holds few promises. As the family goes through the daily ritual of evening prayer at dinner, it has to wonder whether there will be enough food available for tomorrow. Such basic questions have again become important and will continue to be. It is certainly a painful adjustment, but the Pamiris are a resilient mountain people and there is every likelihood that they will survive changing economic fortunes. After all, survival on the roof of the world is a game of skill which the Pamiris have played for hundreds of years with their culture, religion and traditions intact. Oh, baby. 